Hi. Hi, Nikki. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, I'm not sure what you want to talk about, but I want to talk about RIS-5 verification and coverage. Oh, interesting. Why is it in red? Oh, coverage is in red because coverage is the most important thing. Uh, if you can't get the coverage right, we can't be sure that we are done with verification. So I'm really excited to talk about coverage for formal. So let's just focus on this for a second. Now, simulation guys know how to do coverage because they do functional coverage. Sometimes they call it feature coverage, code coverage, and they're all there to measure the quality of stimulus and the quality of checkers uh, and constraints, I suppose. Um, what we're doing in formal is a six dimensional approach. So we have been looking at coverage, as you know, I've been doing formal for a lot of years. So over a period of time, I've come to realize that you can actually break this down into six different dimensions. So the first one is coverage targets, which is the easy bit, which is to say that we want to make sure we describe all of the requirements from the specification into coverage goals. So we could say, have we verified the behavior of add instruction, load, store, branches. So if you were doing architectural verification, if you were doing microarchitectural verification, you would be asking questions around, did we check the specific interactions? And did we actually make sure that the stimulus was hitting this particular area? But that comes later on. But the coverage targets basically define what your top level coverage goals are. Now, once you've defined them in plain English, you can then map them to properties, which you can then run them as assertions and covers in a formal tool. And this would be a second dimension. And as you know, formal tools are pretty good in generating dashboards for you. So you can actually find out how many assertions have passed, failed, how many of them are inconclusive. So you get a nice report. And this is why this is the easy bit, right? So you can go from the top level, which is the easy, to as you go down the path, it gets harder to achieve the goals of the coverage. The third part and the fourth are in particular a very tricky combination. So in formal, we have to understand that the checkers are complete and are of good quality. Is my code checking what needs to be verified completely or not? Uh, in terms of over constraints, we want to make sure that the legitimate stimulus that is meant to come in the test bench is not getting blocked by your constraints. And if you've done these two correctly, and you're getting good assertion coverage reports, then you can go down the path of exploring property-driven coverage, which is a feature in all formal tools that are um, the top end of the game. And what they do for you is they do a stimuli coverage report. They can actually generate checker coverage so what, and mutation coverage. So what is stimuli coverage is they, it checks Without the constraints, you can find out which lines of the design code are activated. Can you hit them? So this is the equivalent of code coverage in simulation. Checker coverage is what assertions were proven and at the time of running them as a proof, what aspects of the design lines were exercised. So the tools will actually annotate the design code, your actual RTL for the processor, and will mark them as being covered or activated uh, by, the, by the actual assertion. And then they can also artificially insert bugs um, and then you can do mutation coverage. We of course believe in um, hand-based mutation, as you know, that gives you the highest bang for your buck. But then if you reach this point, you're not quite done until you start exploring scenarios, which is basically the area where we say, okay, as a formal guy, I have proven that a subtraction instruction works correctly, a store word instruction works correctly. But then the architect can come along and say, have you actually investigated a specific interleaving? And they can specify these in XML and spreadsheets. And then uh, what I've done here is automated all of this into an automatic scenario coverage uh, dashboard, which comes by running these properties in the formal tool. So if you're done with all of these six dimensions, then you are done 100%. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, thank you. That's